Hello and welcome to JD's Network Training. In this session, we'll be looking at the EIGRP tables and the routing table. Here's our EIGRP domain. All these interfaces here are within EIGRP. There is one exception, router 6, loopback 0, it's not in EIGRP. We'll be looking at that later, but let's just quickly verify. We definitely don't have a route to 6. So first up, we'll be looking at our all links table. And generally this has all links within the ERGRP domain. There is two exceptions to the rule. So first is gonna, we're gonna show split horizon. So if you look, it looks like we should have three links to get to 10.1.2 or 10.1.6, but we're only seeing two and that's because split horizon router three. So as the rule states, if I use an interface to communicate with a subnet, I will not also advertise those subnets out that interface. So let's verify that. Router 3 is using fast Ethernet 00, 0 to get 10.1.2 or 6, and that's why it's not advertising it out this interface, but we can change that behavior. And now if we look at our topology table again, all links, we see three routes to 10.1.2 or 6, and there is one more exception to that rule. We can also stop advertising out this interface manually with a distribute list. Let's see that behavior. So once again, we should see the defaults of only two routes, but for a different reason. Now it's a distribute list instead of the split horizon rule stopping it. And once again, we see the two routes and it's only stopped at fast unit 0, 0, 10.1.3.3 because of the distribute list. Now we're going to look at how routes make it to the all links table to the topology table. So if we look at just our topology table for 10.1.2 we're going to see two routes here, but then we're going to see one route only making it to our topology table. And that's because of the feas feasibility rule. So as it states, if a route's reported distance is equal to or above the feasible distance, it's not going to make it to the next table. So the reported distance needs to be less than the feasible distance. And if we see 10.1.5.4 is advertising with a advertised distance, that's the same as our feasible, so we can easily change that behavior too. So what we're going to do is get to fast unit 3.0. We see that change, we see our reported distance from router 4 is less than the feasible distance. So now we should have two routes in our topology table. And we do. It's the exact behavior we're looking for. So now I want to talk about how routes make it to our topology table into our routing table. So although we have two routes here, let's look at what our routing table says about 10.1.2. we only see one route. And that's because the variance rule. So the default variance is one, which states it, the feasible distance has to be the same from any route to make it to the routing table. It's only equal cost multipath routing. So we can also change that though. The, the variance allowed is one through 128. If we times it by 10, this is the multiplier right here. What that will state is that the feasible distance has to be less than 307,000 to make it to the routing table. And there we go. Now this higher cost network is also added to our routing table because our variance has changed, so it's a lot of that network. 
Next up, we're going to be looking at this loopback 0 10.6 and the behavior of static routing. So, So the behavior of a static route is that it's connected. So being told that is the behavior, and logically this router thinks that the class A6 is actually connected, we can add it into EIGRP. And now we should be seeing this network, the whole class A6, out fast Ethernet router 5, value 0, 0. Let's verify that with router 1. We can now get to the class A6, so let's ping 6666. And we have communication. So there's one th more thing we want to look at, and that's EIGRP stubs and what the actual behavior looks like. So I've created router 7 as a stub, and to see that, it can be verified. We have one more table, it's kind of important. Our neighbors table, and it just shows us our neighbors. We don't get too much information here, but if we look at the detail, we can see that we definitely are connected to a stub peer it only advertises connected and summary routes. And that's 10.1.11.7. So it actually starts right there. And it finishes advertising right there. And as it says right here, it's suppressing queries. So that also means that router 4, if it loses a route anywhere in this, anywhere in this domain, and it gets a query and it queries out its interfaces, it's not going to query out interface fast to Ethernet 3.1 to router 7. But although router 7 won't receive the queries, it is allowed to send queries if it loses a route to find it without throughout the EIGRP domain. So let's see what the stub router sees. This router 7 is a stub. Let's verify that. EIGRP stub. So although it doesn't advertise anything but connecting to summary addresses, it's going to get all the addresses from FastEthernet 3.1 from router 4 and know about this whole domain. What it's not going to do is not going to propagate that. So from router 8's perspective, problem here. as I thought, this wasn't saved. The neighbor table right here, the simple one without the details, is pretty simple to see if your neighbors are out to quickly verify that EIGRP is properly running on the interface and you got a neighbor JC up. So now that it's up, we'll look at the routing table. We can verify that EIGRP has only advertised connected and summary routes, and 10.1.11 is a connected route, and that's why we're seeing it. 
So usually you'll want a stub so that your routing table doesn't get too big, doesn't take a lot of memory to look up through the routing table. And maybe to stop queries and different scenarios where you might want to use it. So we can advertise the summary route. So what we'll do is do that. Wait for the resync pretty quick. And now we can get to everybody inside the domain without having a huge routing table here. Well, thanks for joining me for this session. I hope you're able to learn something from it and have yourself a good one.